Okay, I've been on a roll, so I'm going to jump on and do this one too. Um, my pursuit of greater understanding takes me all kinds of places. The last stop was for a, uh, a bit of a trashy panel discussion, men versus women arguing the issues ar around and between the sexes. And the question was, should a man or a woman lead in a relationship? Now, first of all, I think this is a very blunt and primitive question about a very complex and nuanced set of conditions. It's first of all that each of us bring generations of programming to life and then we bring years of life to relationships and now we're going into those the minefield of intimacy <laughs> right and we're we may end up living together yes so i mean this is assuming this is a probably a ugh, probably a bad job of setting up my seat sorry this is assuming that we're talking about a cohabitational romantic relationship be it marriage or otherwise um and so now you've got two people, each with generations of whatnot and years of holy cow, and they're coming together in these intimate spaces, and now they want to cram that all in under one happy little roof, right? So there are so many variables. I don't think there's any simple way to just declare, oh, okay, this is so and so you shall lead. They're making arguments all over the place about uh, a woman's options sexually and if she's making more money then you know she could just leave to pursue something else and they're talking divorce rates and like if the woman is earning more and what happens to women economically after divorce and how men kill themselves at a higher rate after divorce right they're going through all this stuff but they're not talking about all the things it took to make them individuals, bring them together, build a relationship, and then put that in a context where saying who leads even becomes relevant. And I've been in some long-term cohabitational relationships, and I'm racking my brain to think about when that was ever a discussion. Now, maybe that's why I haven't had successful relationships, I don't know, but just in terms of it seems to be such a big deal to some people and for me reflecting on my life experience it really wasn't that big a deal what i would say is that both parties have to show up and do their share well we we, we don't necessarily need leadership we need effective and relevant division of labor that can be adapted over time as conditions change on the ground yeah and this this isn't a military unit it, it it sometimes needs to operate like one but it's not there are plenty of cases where <clears throat> clear leadership is non-negotiable you, you have to have somebody calling the shots or it's bedlam this isn't a, a war front hopefully not like hopefully this isn't constant battle um, now I guess you could say you should be partnering up to stand against the ravages of life at large and there's a little bit of a battle you are battle buddies in some sense but this isn't technically a situation that requires leadership it requires mutual understanding cooperation and a realistic division of, of roles and responsibilities such that it suits that unique organization it's it's each relationship is going to be its own little company and it, it's going to have its own way of running and it's going to have its own needs, it's going to have its own products, it's going to have its own deficits, it's going to have its own surplus. It, you can't just declare that somebody's going to lead and somebody's going to follow and it's going to be okay. And there was a point made that, you know, somebody had said that if he let his wife make all the choices he'd get left and I'm like first of all you don't just get left there's a whole process that goes into a relationship ending 
and it's a person who leaves you. You aren't just, oh, I'm, I'm blue today and I'm orange tomorrow. I'm married today and I'm left the next day. There's that choice of words says to me that maybe doesn't appreciate that she would leave if there's, there's a process and there are conditions that would lead her to leave. And the idea is that she has more opportunity to cheat on him. For some reason, this is relevant to, to his argument that because she can go and just have sex when she wants, that creates an unfair balance of leverage if she also has resources. And I'm like, okay, first of all, I don't know, uh, let's put leverage over there for a minute. The, the fact that she has resources isn't going to incline the typical woman to go and cheat on her husband. Him being resentful, sullen, uh, detached, uh, avoidant, irresponsible, these things are going to break her down and make her want to leave him. If he can't see that they are, they have to be one tight unit and they have to be able to cover down for each other. This is something I think Brene Brown has something with her husband, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody I heard said, the deal is we report at where we are on a scale of one to ten. These, this is my resource meter at the moment one to ten and you've had a shit day of work you didn't sleep well you've got all kinds of things that you've got to account for spinning around you you're like a three right whereas your partner maybe didn't sleep so well but things went okay at work got some things resolved on the way home he's rocking a seven okay he's going to be the same sober lucid present responsible adult and lead in that moment to be like okay let me let me bring a little extra to this. Let me see what needs patching in and make sure there aren't any gaps. We can just ride smoothly over it and we'll get you pulled back up. And when I come home tomorrow and I'm a freaking two and you're, you're only a five, you're still going to be the person who then turns around and, and takes lead tomorrow to say, look, now I'm, now I'm down. I took care of you yesterday. Today I'm in this shape. Now I need you to make sure we're not missing things and, and sort of be the guy on site, even, even if in this case it's the wife. Um, to be able to, to pass that back and forth as it's based on whether or not it's effectively resourced. If you don't have the resources to, to get through the day, all this talk about income and resources and sexual options and divorce, like... It, it doesn't matter, you're not going to get through the day. Um, now I've digressed too far. Okay, so I'm talking about you have to be a unit, you have to be allied, and you have to understand that you have resources and alarms <laughs> between you that you need to effectively manage as a two-man team out in the wilds of life. There's, there's nobody's coming to fix this for you. You need to be able to figure it out between you and this idea of leverage, I was like, if you're focused on leverage, that, that ship's already sinking because it can't be about leverage. It needs to be a, about reasonable and functional distribution of responsibility and resources moment to moment throughout time as circumstances change. You have to be highly adaptable and so, yeah, this idea of just declaring, I'm the boss, like, okay, and then the situation changes. Maybe you need a different kind of leadership. Maybe you need somebody who's on site or has that, that skill set or those resources in that moment. And yeah, so I'm just spitballing here because it made my head spin a little. And this is why I usually don't watch stuff of this caliber but it's important to get out and hear this and be like really this is what you're thinking no wonder we're screwed up <laughs> I'm not mad I don't care I don't have a dog in the fight whoever leads leads whoever follows follows but that should be determined in real time based on the actual conditions on the ground and that I have experience of and here's what happens it's not that she makes more money or she has more sexual options it's that well, one woman on the panel said something about, you know, she's, she's earning an income and then she's got to come home and take on an undue share of the domestic responsibilities. Now, 
I, I'm also not promoting 50-50. Like, you do, half, you do dishes half the week, I do dishes half the week. The week's seven days. Go ahead and figure that one out. It doesn't divide evenly anyway. But, yeah, something that is more responsive and, and more distributive, such as, okay, usually it's my responsibility to do these things, but tonight I had to stay late for a, a Zoom call overseas and I'm coming in totally ruined. Would it be good for our marriage if our kids are jumping around off the wall eating cookies instead of dinner? They're wide awake past bedtime and now I got to wrestle them through a meal, a toothbrush and, and a, you know, pajamas and whatever, like the whole process of bedtime. And then I've got to clean up the mess that they were making while I was out. And then I've got to come in and you're going to be upset with me if I'm not feeling amorous at the moment, right? Like this is just from the inside perspective. Even if a woman's not out in the world, there are times that as a, a, a homemaker and a stay at home parent, a woman can end up working 18 hour days brutal long days depending on how much support she has and how much demand there is it can be really taxing and for the husband in that that particular scenario to come in and be like well there's the bacon I'm gonna go tune out now that that's enough to do it she doesn't need resources she doesn't need lovers on the side she doesn't need any of that to look at it and be like hell no and I think we should be careful about confusing what happens when women have resources saying, oh, well, now I don't need a man. And I'm sure there's some women who bought that line of crap and are living that life. But I think more typically, a lot of women end up staying because they don't have the option. They don't have the resources. And the man is not providing good leadership and now there's no recourse, right? And it may be that the man's even abandoned his role as leader and left that to her in the way that like it is chaos, it is it is disarray. He's not he's not stepping up to to do the work of being the man, but he's expecting all the benefits of it. And so at the end of the day, the wife may be shattered because her husband has not noticed all the work she had to do and yet when you add it up if you could break it down into like units of effort over a day yet maybe he got up and commuted and put in a full day at the office had to make the drive home had to stop for milk on the way home that's no small matter but now you're talking let's just say 40 units of effort she may have had a day of putting in 120 and now he wants to sit down, relax, and, and expects that she'll come to him and be attentive and amorous and, you know, be the, the wife he wants in that moment. It doesn't work like that. And it goes both ways. If the woman is putting her career first and she's kind of claiming, like, playing victim, like, and now I have to do all this too, and da 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 and you never do anything romantic, you don't even look at me like you used to. Maybe it's because she's coming a little hard and she's not recognizing that her husband is, is feeling some way and like has some needs that she's overlooking. It's, it's both partners' responsibility to see where the gaps are and get together around filling in the gaps so that there aren't all these potholes as you're driving along and so yeah I'm just again I'm spitballing as I think about this conversation I had because it doesn't make a ton of sense to me it feels it feels very disconnected from reality it doesn't sound like anybody there has actually had to have long-term cohabitational relationships that are actually loving and mutual and respectful and healthy and nourishing and all these things that we really should want from relationships. I think they're just sort of forced into this state of being structurally sound within a particular context. And this is why I think guys are always surprised when the wife files for divorce. They say, oh, women always initiate divorces. Yeah, typically because it doesn't always get through that this has been a problem a long time. We talked about that. That didn't change. I told you I needed this. It never came through. I asked you to please stop doing that thing. You continued. You know, all this other 
the stuff that piles up and eventually she's like okay i'm done I'm done I'm done I can't no more and the guy's like what why the structure's still here we forced it into hold and life has changed but it's still here right the structure can't house that change that it, it needs to move with it it needs to be dynamic and the i don't even know where a leader fits in that frankly you, you can lead in the moment you'd be like all right i'll take lead on that that's a great phrase in a relationship how about you take lead on that i'll take lead on the other we'll tear the list down the middle we'll get back and we'll see where we are it's not always going to balance perfectly but what you you don't want is somebody who spent 40 effort hour credits or whatever 40 effort credits and another person who spent 120 and there's no no effort to say okay but tomorrow I put in 100 while you do 60 and then you know it kind of ultimately smooths out over time that there's not the kind of inequality that breeds resentment and contempt again like the the rust in the soul of all good relationships right and yeah if you want to rust proof it you need to be at you, you need to be playing at a different level they're talking checkers when we're really talking about chess and so <sighs> she got all fired up <laughs> i'm all bothered no i'm not really because this is why i watch this stuff to sort of like say hey wait a minute how has that so how is this but what about that and yeah I mean the idea that if he left all the decisions to his wife he'd get left yeah he would because he'd be abandoning his role which is to collaborate and coordinate and execute effectively with your partner so you don't leave all the decisions to your wife and expect you're not going to get left nor should she leave all the decisions to her husband and expect that it's not going to fall apart, that he's not going to get comfortable, bored, lose respect for her, take something on the side because men would much rather save the marriage and get something else than actually divorce where women would prefer to divorce and either be on their own or be able to establish something new of, of more substance. Um, that is one of the differences between the sexes, but it's, um, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really work in either direction. They could say like, oh, okay. So I don't know what the virtue of letting the man make all the decisions is. Like, she'll just end up resenting him and, and blaming him and feeling alienated. And there's always this caveat of like, oh, you, you listen to what she says, but you make the decision. I'm like, okay, but life is compromise. You know, you, you have to work with others in all other areas of life. You can't just decide like, I'm going to be the leader on the road and start driving in the oncoming lane. Go ahead, go be a leader. See where that work, where how that works out, and where you you end up. Because that's not really. That's not that's not the. Uh, it's just not the right tool for the job. Where you need leadership is on on taking point on things. That's actually where that becomes relevant and and necessary. And at that point, yes, once you've said this is your mission. I'm going to fall in on your decisions, you need to fall in. And once you say, this is my mission, I need you to fall in, you better have that mission nailed down. Like, that's that's the deal with that. But, yeah, I don't know, this idea of should the man or the woman lead? Yes, both, both should lead, and both should be able to know who's on, on the, f you know, who's the line leader for each piece of this, and should have the sophistication to be able to, to track various roles and responsibilities throughout the ongoing development and, and many, many changes a relationship can go through across years. So especially since we're talking typically, these conversations are around marriage. So yeah, you're gonna be doing this for life under your little happy roof together. That's, that's gonna take, it's gonna take teamwork. And, and that's what we need. We need teammates, not leaders. And that's that's the game I think we really need to be playing. So, yeah, that's my uh, not-so-hot take. Uh, <laughs> not my best dissection of a subject, but there's something in there, and I just wanted to get it down. So, thank you for 
indulging me. I, uh, I really do. This is why I do this. To some extent, this is one of the reasons I do this. Because it does force me to clean up my own thinking and make better arguments for things and to be able to articulate it more effectively and sometimes less effectively. But I wanted to share what was popping for me. And so I thank you and we'll see what other madness comes from the next round. Until then, thank you. Bye-bye.